G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play While My Guitar Gently Weeps, the Anthology 3 acoustic version. For the basics, you'll just need a guitar in standard tuning and a capo on the fifth fret of your guitar. If you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Now, in this lesson, I'm just simply teaching you one song, but if playing the guitar has always been on your bucket list, then check out my complete Guitar Zero to Hero premium course and membership. Tailored to learners of all ages, this course is your pathway to not just learning, but living your dream of playing the guitar with confidence and joy. The link in the description is your first step towards this goal. Now let's get stuck into the song. First, I'm gonna teach you the simplest way of playing the intro, just considering the chords and a basic strumming pattern. Then after that, we'll take those basics, refine it, and I'll teach you how it's played on the recording. So for this simple intro, there's just two lines of chords here. We're going to start with a D minor. We're not playing this D minor the way you'd regularly play it. We're gonna use our pinky finger here on the third fret of the second string, middle finger on the second fret of the third string and index finger on the first fret of the first string. So we just focus from the fourth string onwards and that's our D minor. Our second chord is a D minor over C or D minor slash C. So we're just taking our free ring finger here and put it on the third fret of the fifth string. And we can strum from the fifth string onwards now. And it doesn't really matter if you happen to mute the fourth string as you reach over to hit the third fret of the fifth string. That's our D minor slash C. Then we have a G7 slash B. So keep your index and pinky fingers where they are, you can lift your ring and middle finger now and just put your middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string. And strum again from the fifth string onwards. That's a G7 slash B. And then finally we have a B flat chord. Now with our capo up here on the fifth fret, it starts to get tricky to play bar chord shapes like this with our three fingers all on the same fret. So we're going to need to bar our ring finger across the third frets of the fourth, third and second strings with our ring finger and our index finger just needs to hit the first fret of the fifth string. And we're just focusing on the middle four strings here for this B flat. So those are the four chords, D minor, D minor slash C, G7 slash B, and then our B flat. For our strumming pattern, we can use something like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down. And in succession, down, down, up, down, up, down. One and two. So we apply that strumming pattern to each chord and the first line of chords. One, two, three, four. For the second line of chords, we have our D minor chord for one bar, C chord for one bar, back to our D minor for one bar, and then for the fourth bar, we strum that D minor once more. So that's it for the basic intro, which will sound like this. One, two, three, four. One thing we can do to the strumming pattern to make it sound better is to focus on the root note on the very first down strum every time. So for example, on the D minor chord, on the first down strum, just focus on the root note. Down, down, up, down, up, down. And same with all the other chords. So when we go to a D minor slash C, start off with the root note so it's really clearly defined. So with that root note clearly defined for all the chords, the basic intro could sound like this. So that's the easy way of playing it. Now let's take those basics and refine it. And this is how it's played on the studio recording. Now, if this is too tricky, you can skip this part and just go straight to the verse. There's two lines of tab here. All the chords are the same as what we've covered in the simple intro. But for this, we're gonna be a little bit more particular on 
what strings we play and what strings we hit. So for this first D minor chord, our rhythmic direction is the same as that simple strumming pattern. So down, down, up, down, up, down. For the first down strum, we're gonna strum the full chord, but for every other subsequent down strum, we're just gonna focus on hitting the root note of the chord, which is the open fourth string. And for the up strums, the first time we're doing the up strum, we're focusing sort of on the first and second strings. And the second time we play the up strum, it's the third and second strings. Now you don't have to be super precise about this. The rhythmic direction is more important than anything. And over time, you'll be able to target more of those strings to give a particular sound. So all together, down, down, up, down, up, down. Notice how on every downstroke, except for the first one, of course, I'm really just focusing on that root note. Down, down, up, down, up, down. So this is more flat picking rather than strumming, but the rhythmic directions are the same. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Now when we go to our second bar, our D minor slash C, it's gonna be more or less the same thing. But here we're gonna focus just on the root note the first time we hit this chord. So down, down, up, down, up, down. But everything else is the same. The rhythmic direction and the fact that the first up strum you wanna focus sort of on the higher strings, the first and second, and for the second up strum, you focus sort of on the third and second strings. So down, down, up, down, up, down. When we go to our G7 slash B, it's basically the same as our previous bar in terms of what notes we're hitting. We're just changing chord shapes. So again, rhythmic direction is the same. Down, down, up, down, up, down. But again, always try to focus on the root note each time you hit a down stroke or a rhythmic down stroke. One and two and three and four and... And the same thing goes when we get to our B flat. Down, down, up, down, up, down. Really emphasizing that root note. And altogether, the first line of tab. When we get to the second line of tab for this first D minor, we're no longer playing that same rhythmic direction. We're mixing things up. We'll start by strumming the full chord. On the two beat, you can hit the root note. If you happen to hit the third string, that's okay as well. Then on the three beat, we're going to pluck the first and second strings, but you'll have your index finger lifted because we're gonna strike those two strings and you're going to hammer on and pull off with your index finger like that. Now to hammer on, that's quite simple. You just apply your index finger onto that string with speed and velocity. So, but then to pull off, pull your finger in a downwards direction. And then on the four beat, just focus on the third and second string. So the rhythmic direction here is just down strokes on the one, two, three, and four beat. So one, and two, and three, and four, and... For the second bar, we're gonna to go to a C add nine. Now keep your pinky finger where it is on that third fret of the second string. And then with the rest of your fingers, go into a C chord shape. Now our rhythmic direction returns to what it was for the first line of tab. We start by strumming this chord on the first down strum, and then we're going to go root note, and you can lift your pinky finger here. We focus on the second string for that up stroke, root note, focus on the third string for that next up stroke, and then finally the down stroke. So one and two and three and four and or down, down, up, down, up, down. Then for the third bar, it's a D minor, again with the same rhythmic direction, except for the fourth beat, instead of going back to our root note, we're gonna use the open fifth string as our root note. So one and two and three and four and. And for the final bar, we'll just hit that D minor, but with the open fifth string as well. So the third and fourth bar. And the second line tab in total. One, two, three, four. So as you can see here, rhythmic direction is probably more important than targeting the exact notes that you see here in this tab. Over time, your picking will get more accurate and you'll be able to target these particular notes, but just focus on rhythmic direction for the time being. And in total, this is what the intro sounds like in the full.
Okay, so now we get to the main verse progression. There's four lines of chords here. The first line of chords is the same as the first line of chords for the intro, so nothing new to learn there. For the second line of chords, we have our D minor, a C chord, then a G chord, and an A chord. So you can play this A chord like this, however you like, but I like just barring my index finger across the second frets of the fourth, third, and second string, and focusing on the middle four strings. The third line of chords is the same as the first line of chords, and for the fourth line of chords, it's the same as the second line of chords, except instead of a G chord, we're gonna play an F chord. Now you can play a full F bar chord like this, but I like playing an F with my thumb reaching over the top to hit the first fret of the sixth string. So index finger on first fret of the second, middle finger on the second fret of the third, ring and pinky on the third frets of the fifth and fourth string, and that thumb reaching over the top. If you can't get that thumb reaching over the top for that root note, you can just focus on the middle four strings, and that's still essentially an F chord. So with all that in mind, this is what the verse will sound like. And again, we're going to keep the same rhythmic direction with our strumming pattern. And if possible, you always want to focus on the root note on the downstrokes. So it will sound like this. Next we move on to the chorus which has two lines of chords that are going to be repeated through twice. We have a D chord, then we're going to an F sharp minor bar chord. So we buy our index finger across the second fret and our ring and pinky fingers go on the fourth frets of the fifth and fourth strings, like that. Then we go to a B minor, so we just shift everything down one string and our middle finger will actually come down onto the third fret of the second string as well strum from the fifth string onwards and back to an F sharp minor. Now in the chorus we'll use a slightly different strumming pattern. We'll play down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And with that in mind, the first line of chords. For the second line of chords we'll go to an E minor and then an E minor 7 so you can just take your pinky or ring finger and put it on the third fret of the second string. And then we go to an A chord for two bars. Now the first time around we'll play those two A's for a full strumming pattern each, but for the second time around we play this progression for that final bar of A, we'll just hit it and let it ring out. So that's it for the chorus, which sounds like this in total. Now the final thing to learn is the outro. So the first line of chords here starts off the same way as the verse. So we have our D minor, D minor slash C, G7 slash B, and our B flat. So nothing new to learn there. But then to end the song, we're gonna play this riff again and again. It's quite simple. We have our D minor chord. We're just gonna strum that fully and then lift out your next finger and pluck the open first string and then the second string by itself. So like that. From there, keep your pinky finger where it is and fret a C chord behind it. So this is technically a C add nine. We're gonna strum this full chord and then lift your pinky finger, pluck that second string and then we'll hit the fourth string. And that's the riff in total, so. And that's just gonna be repeated again and again until the song fades out. But in the playthrough at the end, I'll play it through four times and then I'll end the song with a D minor. 
So the outro in total will sound like this. Now I'll just play the riff through twice, but in the playthrough I'll play it through four times. In the actual song it just kind of goes until the song fades out. And those are all the parts you need to learn for this Anthology 3 version of While My Guitar Gently Weeps. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of this song with a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.